Hello and welcome back to another Fjordfish video. Today, still on Rennesse, I'm fishing in Hellandsborgen or Hellands Bay. And uh, I don't think the video does it justice, because this place was pretty damn idyllic or idyllic or however you say that. Um, pretty much the uh, hardest day so far this year. It was about 20 degrees Celsius max and uh, it was a chill wind so it was just, oh it was perfect. I've been waiting for this all winter man and here I am. Loving it. Now the clear water, pretty good. You can see the eelgrass cells started to kind of grow up and uh, yeah, soon it will be fully grown which is good and bad I guess. And uh, I'm fishing, starting off with I believe it was a size 12 hook with, you know, the regular split shot and <laughs> Berkeley girl. I mean, this this is good for just banging around the rocks a little bit. So, you know, it's kind of like one of my go-to starting the day out uh, area, you know, um, kind of fishing lure in areas like these. I brought along a crappy rod that's pretty much broken today that I paid $10 for, like, a while back, but yeah, uh, pretty instantly get my first uh, black goby, 31 grams, which is fairly decent, I'd say, it's actually quite large uh, black goby, and there were quite a few of them in this area, I lost one there, but I'm just gonna quickly show you um, all the black gobies, so, because, uh, yeah, if I gotta show you, yeah, just, I, I got some other stories coming up in this video, so I just, uh, here's the black gobies that I managed to catch before I try to fish for something else. You know, it's kind of like... I, I I do enjoy catching these fish, but I don't want to catch too many of these fish, because then I might not enjoy it so much in the future. And I still want to come back years from now and go for a few of these at the start of my fishing trip and be like, yeah, nice, nice, still, still enjoying this, and, and kind of not ruin it for me. Um... Like, a quick story here. My, um, <laughs> uh, when I was like eight, I collected stamps, as many kids do, uh, or at least at my school, many kids did at that age. And, um, I got like a few stamps there, a few stamps there. Uh, by the way, what I'm trying to do, anyway, basically, more of the story, my grandmother bought me two grocery bags full of stamps and after that I was kind of done with stamps because it's like too much just too much stamps it was no longer fun screw that shit and I guess thank you for that honestly well both thank you for buying that also thank you for getting me out of stamps because it's a pretty geeky thing to do so you know here's some fly porn for those of you that are into that uh, kind of started mating in front of me though but yeah so you can see me fishing with a barber though and I'm, I saw schools of uh, painted goby, no, not painted goby, some kind of goby, like the school together, very tiny ones, and some sticklebacks. And I tried to catch some of them with a size 26 hook, and a barbel, and with a split shot, and some shrimp on it. And so I, yeah, I couldn't catch any, and after a while of trying that, I decided, you know what, let's see what kind of hints the internet has. For me to catch these fish, because I've tried before, and painted goby are equally tiny, and I have no problem catching these. But these goby sir don't know the English name, but it's tangkutling in Norwegian, which is like kelp goby, directly translated. But I'm pretty sure that's not correct. And so I tried many, many different things. Uh, I actually uh, didn't show all of that looking up the info thing here, but I, I found. After some digging, some English dudes that, uh, like, it's hard to find tips on catching these tiny microfish because not many people go for them. So, this is, <laughs> you know, I had to do a little bit of digging with slow ass internet since I'm way the heck out, uh, you know, on the countryside on an island, basically. But yeah, so, uh, what they had success with catching them with was, uh, a Berkeley gulp, tiny piece of that and a tiny hook. So I put on a size 26 hook and I put just a fragment of Berkeley gulp on it and I started jigging a little bit with that. And they they were interested. They attacked it. The shrimp they didn't touch. I threw a whole shrimp with eggs, everything down there for them to just to see if they would eat it. 
no go didn't give a damn and the problem was a lot of other fish as you can see here came by and they didn't really go for the girl on the 26 hook but uh they went for the <laughs> the lead like constantly there was a uh a cork wing grass trying to constantly like he tried to eat he just ate and spat out my lead about like 20 freaking times man like and this kind of scared the smaller, tiny microfish I was trying to catch, just to, you know, actually, because I haven't caught them before on rod. With a, with a net, you can just, like, scoop down and catch 20, it's no problem. But with, with a rod, though, it's uh, a little bit more challenging. And, yeah, so... So, yeah, as you can see here, I, um... Finally, eventually, a uh, another corkwing grass. Not the one that was spitting out the, uh... Or attacking the lead, but a tinier one took the hook. <clears throat> so this is my first corkwing uh, ras this year. I've been looking for them. This is the first day I've seen them, like a hundred percent confirmed. I might have seen one earlier out fishing, but for sure there were some here. Now I wasn't large by far at all, but yeah, you know. And so I kept I kept trying this for like an hour or so, like uh, just no luck i tried fishing between the cracks because there was like a large school of them right underneath this um this little dock here but yeah you know eventually i just decided you know what screw this i'll i'll research a little bit on what to do and i'll try again another time so i saw some sand gobies here and i haven't seen any sand gobies anywhere on this island so far i haven't been exploring that much though to be fair but I saw some sand gobies there, and I was thinking, aha, uh -huh, I might catch one of those for the first time uh, on this YouTube channel. I haven't caught many of them in my life, but uh, first off, I caught another black goby. This is by far my most caught fish. As you can see, I've caught 287 fish, as you can see in the lower left-hand corner, and that was black goby number 77. So, uh, 77 out of 287, or whatever the heck it was, uh, yeah. It's a, it's a fairly large part. Oh man, I caught the sand goby there and it just fell off the hook. Size 14 hook I'm using right now. And it's just honestly a little bit too big for them. Uh, you're not going to hook them well with that. You need smaller hooks. But yeah, the that guy is going to probably die a slow painful death. I could not, he rolled over underneath the dock and then into some rocks. I could not get him. But... I managed to catch another sand goby, 3 grams, and you know, honestly, the Norwegian record on these are 10 grams, they don't get big whatsoever, and I, the largest I've ever seen or caught might be like, uh, I don't think more than 4 grams to be honest, I haven't been hunting much for them, um, just, I have caught them a few times before, as you can see on a picture that I had there, I took that when I was out hunting specifically for these ones, and uh, yeah. So it hit low tide and I just could not seem to catch anything for quite a while. I tried fishing all around the uh, docks in this area. I tried with shrimp, I tried with this, tried with that, had a rod with bait out while I was trying to actively fish and nothing, nothing even touched the bait. So for some reason, uh, no interest at the low tide point. Until, you know, until I caught another black goby. I could catch more of these on the low tide point because these just, they attack. They, you know, you can always catch some of these. This is no problem whatsoever. But I mean, how many of these do you really want to catch though? I mean, I actively try to avoid catching them and see if I could catch something else. So if I saw like, oh, now there's a black goby coming at my hook and I just, nope, nope, not for you. Just try to kind of walk it away from the black goby. Um took a little while for this uh, poor creature to uh, wake up again though, but that's how it is. And so I switched position over to the other side of the bay, there's a lot of sheep there, and uh, they were kind of scared of me at first, they kind of ran away as I came there, and uh, well they kind of warmed up to me I guess as I was kind of just hanging around there, not harming them or bothering them, and they kind of you know got closer and, and they just walked away entirely. But it's nice with some uh, so sheep. Sheep are cozy. I have no problem with sheep. Um, used to... Uh, <laughs> sounds a little bit stupid, but sometimes we were uh, on vacation, on the camping, on a farm on another island across the fjord from here, uh, where 
with a rough sh sheep and I kind of befriended some of them and they would always kind of, when they saw me, they would come and say hi and just hang out with me doing whatever. So <laughs> it's kind of weird, I know, but it was kind of, kind of cute too. So yeah, I caught a gold sinny there and another black goby. Just switched down to size 14 hook once again here and just to catch the gold sinny less. So I had another species for the day. And as I was kind of just banging around the rocks there, I noticed... Oh, wait a minute. That's a bell and rest that I see. On the left-hand side, I mean, you will see it. It will come out, though. So I tried to, uh... To get it with the gulp. I tried to get it with the shrimp. I tried to get it with several different setups for the hook and la di da He just sniffed it. Didn't really take it, though. My idea here is that... Or what I'm thinking is that... Maybe it's because my fishing line is green. Fish are supposed to see very well blue and green colors. And my fishing line being green, I mean, you might just see it simply, simple as that. That might also be the case for the tinier fish that I was trying to catch, but this is a 0.06 millimeter thickness line. Like, it's, uh, I don't know, it's some super strong whiplash thing, and... Uh, yeah I, I, yeah, I like it because you can thread small hooks onto it pretty easily. Like the size 30 hooks that I have and whatnot. And so, you know, I mean, I try for a while to get get this guy. I mean, I'm just dumping shrimps in front of him. He's just like, nope, gonna swim circles around this area here instead. Okay. So, but I didn't want to give up, so I tried for quite a while. Um, but no luck. I saw some other rats as well, but... They didn't come by. Uh, what uh, if you even heard that? Because I was talking, but like uh, a trout jumped right in front of me. I wish I had the camera slightly higher. Though. So I decided to put on like the smallest spinner-like thing that I have with me. It's definitely really not small enough, though. Um, I, I didn't have the right gear for trout fishing today. But I decided to try anyway, and I just kind of threw across where I saw him jump and started reeling in. And, um, actually, he attacked it, but I guess he, he kind of came at it from the side. I could see him attack it, because it was, like, uh, on the top of the water. And, um, yeah, he probably got stung by the hook, so he just pissed off and didn't come back. But on my second cast, there uh, came, like, a Palak or a Bell and Rass at the spinner lure thing. And, uh, yeah, well... I also did not hook that, but after that, I tried with a new, with the other rod, with a clear fishing line, and I dropped down just a Berkeley gulp in front of this guy, and BAM! Instantly took it this time. I tried the same thing, but with the other fishing line, and no way, but it's the Balan Rass of the year, so far. It's 10 grams larger than the largest one I had caught previous to this, so, you know, stepping it up. Um... Definitely not like super large still though, but they're always nice to catch. I, I enjoy uh, catching Battle and Rest because no matter the size, they put up a good fight relative to their size. So I decided since I had that uh, spinner thing on, I might as well try casting out into the fjord here. And uh, ran into these little guys. So I turned to walk and they just started coming closer. So I was like, oh, maybe they want to say hi or something. Tried putting down my rod and uh, yeah, nope. They, they weren't really that brave after all, which is a shame. I mean, I like sheep, as I've said, in a, <laughs> in a totally non-sexual way. I mean, a lot of people on the internet that might be misinterpreting things like that. The cute animals, they're very, you know, they're very just chill, I guess. It's not like I'm hanging out with sheep on a regular basis or anything. But yeah, I mean, so I, uh, I tried here for a little while, both with shrimp and with um, spinner, tried casting, tried dropping along the rocks, and absolutely nothing. But it was low tide, so that could have something to do with it. And yeah, after a while, you know, I, t I tried many places so. so. I'll, I'll definitely come back to this place and fish again. I think I'll try bringing my fly rod to catch some of the gobies, maybe on like a tiny fly or something. Or, uh, well, a trout. So, 
I tried to take a shortcut back home. Turns out it led out past these guys, which as I came by, they all came running up to me. So I guess they were expecting like this, you know, oh, a human. It's time for food. But they weren't really that interested or anything, so. I don't know, I guess they were disappointed in me not coming with like pellets for them to eat or something. Uh, like, oh, you gonna give us grass? Well, I don't know, I don't have anything else to give you, so. What am I gonna do? But yeah, uh, the entire um, shortcut uh, turned out to be actually a detour. Aren't they cute? I think so, at least. And, uh, yeah, I kinda ended up walking through this field and that field, and I tried to take another shortcut later on. Turns out that was also a detour, so, yep. Master of Orientation, right there. But I happened to uh, stumble upon on this, uh, not this gravel hole, but like further up, uh, just like a keychain uh, with keys on it. And I was like, okay. Why is that lying in the road here? So I uh, walked over to the nearest house and like, hey, hey, you missing these? No, but they would, you know, they took them and were like, yeah, we're gonna see if we can figure this out. So, good deed of the day, I suppose. It doesn't really make up for all the pain and torment I caused the fish, but whatever. I'm gonna leave you with a cute bunny that for some reason does not run away even though there's no fences keeping it in. Alright, peace.